morning everyone. Great to see you all, sort of. You know what I mean. Grace, peace and mercy from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. In you alone we put our hope, God the Father, creator and sustainer, who gives all good things, seen and unseen. In you alone we put our hope, God the Son, Saviour and Redeemer, who died for our sins and rose again. In you alone we put our hope, God the Spirit, teacher and comforter, who moves us to sing, our God reigns. In you alone we put our hope. Amen. Amen. Gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, inspired by the Holy Spirit and blessed by God, we come to worship one holy God. Our God, our own God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Your, your majesty, majesty is the music of the starry skies, skies. yet, yet even, even children of dust can sing your praises. praises. In the name of the healer, the provider and the enabler, let your gratitude and joy be made known. O God, God, our own God, God how, how wonderful, wonderful is your name, name in all the earth. earth. That's the Sunday. Oh, okay. When we don't know how or what to pray, the Spirit knows. When all we can muster are sighs and groans, the Spirit knows those also. When we feel that we aren't even worthy to approach God, the Spirit goes before us and with us and welcomes us with arms open. Let us confess our sins together. Father, you come to meet us. When we return to you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we praise God for his forgiveness, saying together, All, all praise, praise to the Father, Father all, all praise to the Son, all, all praise Holy Spirit, great God, God three in one, one. our end, end, our beginning, our friend and our King, we worship and serve you, <coughs> your praises we will, will sing. Emma's going to bring us our reading. Our reading is Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. Now when Jesus came into the, into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound on, in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's affirm our faith. 
Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe and trust, trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to have to thank you, Emma, if you can... Thank you. <laughs> it's telling me my storage is almost full and I have no idea why because it's live it's not recording <laughs> so this concludes our little sermon series on, on prayer that I've rehashed um, from using before and last time um, I did this in church I showed you a film clip um, from a film called Talaged I can't even say it Taledaga Night the Ballad of Ricky Bobby. And it, it, it's a really funny bit. There's, um, it's Will Farrell, and he's saying grace with the rest of his family who um, are race, stock car racers. And he's saying grace before their meal. And um, he starts by saying, dear baby Jesus. And all the way through, he keeps praying to dear baby Jesus. And his, his wife interrupts and she goes, he became a man. He was a man. And he goes, yeah, but I prefer the baby Jesus. I like Christmas Jesus. And he carries on praying to baby Jesus. And then his dad interrupts and he goes, he had a beard. He was a grown man. And he's just going, yeah, but Christmas Jesus is so much cuter. And he's got his little diapers and the cute little baby bond Jesus. Which kind of, you know, who is Jesus? Who is he for you? We've spoken a lot over the last few weeks about digging deeper into prayer and drawing closer to God. We've spoken a lot about knowing who God is. We need to know who it is we are actually talking to, who we are praying to. And Jesus certainly knew who God is, which is why he could pray with such confidence and authority. Before he prays, for Lazarus to be raised from the dead. And let's face it, you need some sort of confidence to pray for someone to be raised from the dead. Jesus prays, I thank you, Father, that you already hear me. That's a really important fact to hold on to. God may or may not answer prayers as we see fit, but he always hears us. He knows what his plans and purposes are for us plans to prosper us and not for harm. Now I don't know about you but I've always thought of heaven as a peaceful and quiet place but recently I wonder if I've actually got that right. I'm going to read to you now Revelation 4 so listen to how peaceful and quiet heaven is. After this I looked and there in heaven a door stood open and the first voice which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there in heaven stood a throne with one seated on the throne. And the one seated there looked like Jasper and Cornelian. And around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Around the throne are 24 thrones and seated on the thrones are 24 elders dressed in white robes with golden crowns on their heads. Coming from the thrones are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature, like a lion, the second like an ox, the third with a face like a human face, and the fourth like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings and full of eyes all around and inside, day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. 
And whenever the creatures give glory and honour and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the throne, who is the one who is seated on the throne, and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they will they existed and were created. So that first verse, a voice spoke to me like a trumpet. That's not a whisper or a polite invitation to come on in. It's been heralded into the kingdom. And then we're told the 24 elders seated around the throne and from their seats come flashes of lightning and thunder. And again, not exactly the peace and quiet that we imagine. Then we have the four living creatures who day and night without ceasing are praising God. Kind of makes our hour on a Sunday morning look a little bit pathetic, doesn't it really? But here they are. They do not stop praising God. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Then the 24 elders join in the worship too. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things. Heaven is a full of noisy praise and worship. But God still hears our prayers amongst that cacophony of praise. I think it goes quiet when we pray. I think God our Father is like a dad with a baby monitor listening for his children. And when we pray, he says to heaven, Shh, did you hear that? One of my children is talking to me. I remember when Jack was born, that baby monitor came everywhere with me. I didn't want to miss him when he woke or miss him crying out for me. So if I thought I heard a noise, I would turn the TV down and look at Sean and say, did you hear that? We were constantly tuned in to listening for our child's voice. And that's how God hears us. He is constantly tuned in to listening to our prayers. The question is, are we tuned in to hearing God's voice? Remember, prayer is a relationship. There are no right or wrong ways to pray. Use words or don't. The important thing is your desire to meet with God. Paul tells us to pray without ceasing, meaning that we should, if possible, do everything all day with God as our reference point. There should be, there should be a background of praise and thankfulness and joy behind every event in our day, which I know is easier to say than to do. There are many times when we find that's just impossible to do. We want to be angry with God rather than praise him. But I think, think the fact that you are angry with him still has him at the centre of whatever you're angry about. You're still talking to God. Being upset and angry with God is still prayer. It's relationship. I would love to encourage you to practice prayer. Practice so that this kind of spontaneous and constant prayer should be a habit of our hearts. Practice daily so that it becomes natural and not a chore. We all have plenty of bad habits, so let's try to develop some good spiritual habits. So where are you in your prayer life? Imagine that your soul is a boat. A boat with both oars and a sail. Which of these four questions resonates with you? Are you sailing? Sailing means you are living the Christian life with the wind at your back. God is real to your heart. You often feel his love. You see prayers answered. God speaks to you through the Bible and you sense people around you being influenced by the Holy Spirit through you. Are you rowing? Rowing means you are finding prayer and reading the Bible to be more of a duty than a delight. Often God seems distant, but the sense of his presence is fairly rare. You may be struggling 
doubts about God and yourself. However, you continue to read the Bible and pray regularly. Are you drifting? Drifting means that you're experiencing all the condition, conditions of rowing, spiritual dryness, etc. But in response, instead of rowing, you let yourself drift. You don't feel like approaching and obeying God, so you don't pray or read. You give in to self-centeredness and feeling sorry for yourself. Or are you sinking? Eventually, your boat, your soul, forward motion in the Christian life. The numbness of heart can become hard, hardness because you give in to thoughts of self-pity and resentment. Be honest with yourselves. Where do you find yourself at this moment in time? And what are you going to do with that discovery? I've got to be honest with me, I am somewhere in between sailing and rowing. I don't fit into either of those, I'm definitely in between. We have an amazing God of grace. Receive it, receive his grace, apply it, pray. Sometimes it will feel like we are rowing in the dark, that we aren't making any progress at all. But we are. And when the winds rise again, as they surely will, we will sail again. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. King of kings, Lord of lords, whom we are joined together to serve, teach us also to serve one another in your name. For whoever exalts himself should be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. As we are the body of Christ, may we be mindful that every member is a part of the whole, needed by us all, and they also serve who only stand and wait. Lord, the beauty that is in you and of you and from you is beyond all our imagining. Your truth shines like a beacon to shed light on our journey. Your power is beyond our imagining. Show us your glory, we pray, in so far as we can grasp it, and shield us from eating more of the tree of knowledge that we can, than we can bear until we are able, at the last, to gaze upon you without fear. Lord, in our homes and of our places of work, let us not take pleasure and find glory in the power that we have over each other. For the strongest may become weak over time, and we achieve most when we share the weight of authority among us, so that each may be empowered in your name. Lord of all knowing, the Lord of all, knowing the intricacies and intimacy of all that is created, we remember before you those who live with painful memories and challenging perceptions in this world. We remember those in hospital and community care against their will, and those who struggle to find meaning in life. Help those of us who do, who do struggle with their own mental health to be without fear of difference. Help those who do so struggle to become strong enough to ask others for support. Father, we pray for those that we know who are sick and in need of your help at this time. Lord, hold us all close in your care. Father, you have told us that you are preparing a place for us. Prepare also us, we pray, so that where you are, we may be always. O Lord of life and death, comfort those who mourn their departing, and may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I really don't like the 
スマヨかな体重のオプション。モーニング<笑> Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father Peace from His Son Jesus Christ who is our peace Peace from the Holy Spirit the life giver The peace of the triune God be always with you And also with you <laughs> We offer one another a sign of the peace Peace, peace be with you, with you. The Lord is here. His the Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. And now we give you thanks because you have revealed the glory of your eternal fellowship of love with your Son and with the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendour, yet one God, ever to be worshipped and adored, saying together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread... He praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon, upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom come, come your, your will be done. done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are, we are one, one body, because we all share in one bread. One bread.
This table does not belong to any denomination, church or community. It belongs to Jesus. It was at table that he met people, heard their stories and shared his. It was at table that he deepened his friendship with poor folk and prostitutes, the business class and puzzled bystanders. It was at table that he shared profound insights into who God is and what God wants. And it was at table with bread and wine that he initiated the sacrament that we now celebrate. And though we can't physically come together at this table, we come nonetheless. We leave behind any baggage of arrogance or unworthiness. <coughs> so do not think this is not for me. Think rather of Jesus saying, I am for you. And accept his invitation to be the friend he cherishes and longs to feed. <coughs> Child of God, the body of Christ. Amen. Child of God, the body of Christ. We say together, <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, through this service you have spiritually nourished us and we thank you. Take us, renew us and remake us. What we have been is past, what we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us onward, take us with you. Amen. May blessings of the dynamically unchanging Trinity be ours. May the Father's enduring love accompany us in our lives. May Jesus himself strengthen us to be co-builders of his kingdom. And may the Spirit indwell and inspire us on our journey. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Amen. Stay safe, spread peace wherever you are, love and serve the Lord in any way you can. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us. And as ever, as I say every time at the end of a service, if you need us, you know where we are, please do get in touch. Thank you all.